All right, here are the two that I hung on the line till they were partly dry. You know, they, they sat a little bit too long, so the edges were a little bit too dry. But now that I folded them back into the damp interior, they've been sitting in the fridge for, I don't know, it's like five days or something. Now they're much more even. And that also means that the wetter parts, the thicker parts like this, some of that moisture had has moved out of those areas and into the thinner areas. So it's much more even. And these two sheep hides, were tacked out and then damped back in some damp towels. And you may recall I added a little bit extra water like here, you can't even really tell because again, it, it soaked in and uh, spread out. Same with this, you know, this these edges are now feeling really at a good place. There's only so much you can do um, if they don't want to be soft, but these hides are definitely gonna want to be soft. I've talked about this through the whole process, how sheep skins are just kind of a loose fibered skin in the first place. And they just, they're not gonna wanna be a stiff, heavy, flat, dense, uh, low stretch leather. You'll also see that, be, um, and this has something to do with like the internal loose structure of the hide. It has all these wrinkles. It looks like alligator skin or something. It's most most obvious up here on the neck. When I dried these stretched out, it, it actually de-accentuated that. But this is this is a very strong characteristic of these hides, and you can't get rid of that. Like there's no way I could take anything and slick that down and smooth it out. Um, you can do that with skins to an extent. You know, I could make it more like that but it doesn't want to be like that. So what we're going to do is lean into that characteristic and accentuate it and make this whole surface all crinkly uh, textured, which is going to be really, really neat. Through this process, uh, you know, maybe a few times, I'll add a thin layer of oil to the grain to just nourish that and, and put some more oil in the hide. But a common mistake is to over oil bark tans. Like you don't want to saturate it. You just want, um, you know, the, the skin fiber well lubricated and especially the grain, which is a little more prone to like uh, cracking and uh, damage from abrasion and stuff like that. I have this old sheet down here. I'd rather be just working on the wood, but this wood was kind of dirty. Now in general, General, what I want to do is I want to keep these fibers broken apart. It's not like rawhide where they're just going to glue down really hard into this like horn like plasticky type of substance, but they will still, um, even though it's tanned and lubricated, they will stick together a little bit and they'll shrink. You know, I had it tacked out here and here and here, but this stuff's all shrunk in. Well, I want to pull that stuff out really well and, and get the hide stretched back out fully into its kind of normal um, shape, which is not flat. Animals aren't flat, right? So the hide's going like around the animal, underneath, under the legs, under the neck, all that stuff. And so it creates kind of a ripply effect on the outside. So that's just normal. So our goal today is to keep these hides moving enough, which isn't very much, but enough to uh, have them dry nice and soft. Oily rag with some olive oil. You just end up with olive oil. Like I buy some olive oil and I'm like, this is crappy olive oil because I'm picky and I'm like an olive person. And then I just throw it in the shed and use it for tanning hides. But there's no reason to use any kind of a heavy oil on a leather like this, like say a tallow, like for instance, sheep fat, goat fat, deer fat, uh, cattle fat. All those are kind of like these dense, thick oils that are solid at room temperature, right? Like if you have a piece of tallow, you can actually make a candle out of tallow. It's that solid at room temperature. But let's say I wanna make a very soft, supple skin and you end up in cold weather and it's full of one of these hard oils, these heavy hard oils, well then it just freezes up. I gotta be careful here not to add too much. I feel like I'm overdoing it a little bit. Pro I'm probably not, but I, I want to be a little conservative because I can always add more, but you can't really take it out easily. And it's a little breezy. It's pretty warm, so I can't take too long to do this. In fact, as soon as I'm done with this one, I'm going to put these other two away until I get two of them started, and then I can deal with the other two, oiling them. And certainly the thicker areas like this could take more oil than the real thin areas. And again, I think I just wanna put these two away so the edges don't dry out too much while we're getting these two started. These things are, are so close to dry already. What I was trying to do worked, right? Damping back. I got them to a nice 
low moisture level but consistent that's going to dry quickly and I got to be careful it doesn't dry before I can work on it. And let's start on this one by opening all these thin edges and getting those first. The edges are going to dry the fastest so I want to make sure that they're opened out, stretched all the way back out toward the edge. And we're going to do two things to accomplish that. One is to start toward the middle of the hide and pull out and pull off the edge like this. And the other one is to turn it sideways and work after that, work over the edge this way. And there's no reason to sit here and just saw back and forth for a long time. I'm just pulling it over to get the, the stretch on it and then I'm going to go do something else. That is the first step. Thinnest areas, get those edges stretched out and open back to a more natural state and not all shrunk up. Okay, I've gone around all the edges. I'm going to do the same thing across the entire middle of the skin and I'm going to do it in more than one direction. So this is the neck. I'm going to work across the neck and then like across the back. Just kind of go over it a few times in each spot and then I'll turn the hide and do the same thing working neck to tail. The fibers are being bent really sharply over the blade, which is very dull by the way. You can't cut the skin. That just really works the fibers open and stretches everything. All right, this has been gone over um, on the stake once and all across the middle and all the edges. It's feeling actually really great and soft and leather-like already just from that little bit of working. The thin edge is inward um, so that they don't dry too fast. If anything, if it sits around and the center of the skin is damper, it will re-dampen the thin edges. But it's just a good habit. Take this one out to do the same thing. Put this one in here. When I've staked that one, I'll probably put it in there, take another one out, etc., until all four of them are started. And I've got those crucial thin edges at least worked over one time. So this is what I'm talking about with the edges. While this was sitting around at some point, the edges got too dry too fast. And I mean, it was super fast, but again, it's windy and dry out here. And these edges are not only thin, um, but they're not that wet, right? I want them to the point where there's only a small amount of moisture in there. So they're drying super fast, especially like the softer you want it. You really want to work it while, while it's drying, you know, like you want to start when it's a little bit wet. So I did the first two hides that had been nailed out to the wall. And um, now these two though, the next two, I, I'm not going to oil this right now because I just want to get the edges worked open real fast. But these, since they were dried just hanging on a line, they really uh, shrunk in a lot more. So these should stretch out quite a bit more. Which also makes it more critical. I'm just checking the grain here. I'm not liking those wrinkles right there. Yeah, even more so I want to get these edges stretched out while they're still damp because they would have shrunk in a lot more. And I'm going to do both of these, same thing. Go off the edge, off the edge, turn it sideways, go along the edge, and then work through the whole middle of the hide in two directions, and we'll be on our way. I'm not liking how dry some of these edges are. I want more time to work on the skins while there's more moisture in some of these edges. So I'm going to damp these back a little bit more. Then I'll fold those toward the inside of the skin, which is damp, roll it up and leave it for some amount of time. That may be today, uh, it may be tomorrow. The goal of the situation is that I want more time while the skins are wet to keep working this fiber to get it softer because the goal with these skins is to get them pretty broken up and pretty soft. I also want uh, to set up a cable which is like a steel cable that you pull the hide around because that will really break these guys up. This makes a pretty fine mist so I'm just gonna hit like the edges here on the grain side first. I'm gonna avoid the areas that already have plenty of moisture in them. But areas that are kind of, you know, marginal, it's okay if I, I spray those. Because really my problem is, in this case today, is more that they're drying too fast and there's not enough moisture than 
that, you know, I want to get the moisture way down so that they dry quicker. It's really nice in any tanning to be able to control your environment, uh, especially with finishing hides. You want to dry leather slow, so that's going to completely vary between the seasons. If you're softening and breaking leather like we are today, um, especially brain tan, you know, you really want it warm and dry and then it's going too fast and so you want to slow it down. And often that's not possible, but it's nice. And, you know, a well set up tannery would have options in, in some way or another. It would have options for finishing. Certainly, if nothing else, an enclosed building that was heatable, you know, with wood heat or something. An area to go outside and set things in the sun. Shady areas. This one's better, but again, I'm not really worried that this is going to add too much moisture. I really have the opposite problem. And this doesn't have to be completely even or anything, because again, like if I, if I leave it long enough, the moisture is going to move around in here and redistribute itself. Now here's the two that I've already oiled, and they are generally damper. Yeah, this feels pretty good. I'm just gonna hit the edges a little bit, just in case. I'd rather err on the side of too much moisture in these conditions. This one was a little stiffer and a little drier, so if I hit this one with a little bit more, see you in a while. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Pulling a hide across a cable is a great way to get it very soft and work it really hard, really fast. If the hide is weak in any way, it can um, cause damage because this is a really, uh, it's a really vigorous uh, exercise and it's pretty hard on the hide, but that's kind of also what makes it uh, work so that it can get stuff really soft. So last time we were working on these, I wasn't satisfied with the moisture level of these um, edges because they were just drying too fast and they were already too dry. You don't need to work it constantly. It's not like you want to just beat it and beat it and beat it and just keep working the same spot over and over and over again. There's a point of diminishing returns or even no returns where you just done enough and you can like let the let some more of the moisture leave and then come back and work it again because as the moisture leaves it might kind of like stiffen up and glue down a little bit and you just want to keep that that broken up uh, so especially with bark tan you don't need to just overwork it basically because you'll be wasting time and energy but you do want to work it enough and you know it's true that if you work it more you might get it more soft to an extent but again there's a point of diminishing returns so keep that in mind as we're working here so here's one way you can work them like let's say you tanned a hide and you have just one hide you don't have a stake like I do this tool over here that, you know, I was pulling the hides over before. So just standing around like that and pulling it, and especially on the edges, you wanna pull off, like pinch it and squeeze and pull off the edge. Then when you're done with that, pull the edge lengthwise like that to stretch it the other way. So I'm gonna leave these, you know, bundled up because I don't want them to be drying while I'm getting this one started. Another thing you can do is this, especially if you hit a tough area that feels maybe a little dry or something, just like that. Kinda, that really works the, the fiber a lot. Right now what I'm trying to do is get around all of the edges once to get make sure that they're really well opened and they're not you know gonna dry on us before they're worked. Maybe pay a little bit of extra attention to the thinner edges and parts of the hide or anything that feels like it's drying quickly. Now that all the edges have been gone over, I'm going to go through the middle. Uh, first from leg to leg or side to side, I guess you'd say, and then from neck to tail. I'm just going to get a good stretch on it. And I'm one thing I could do is just put it on the stake, grab the two edges and lean and put a stretch on it but that doesn't get this effect of the, the hide having to bend and the fibers having to bend over this sharp edge, which is really a lot of how this works. Um, if you are just trying to stretch, that is a good technique. Very useful, very fast, uh, relatively easy than you know sitting here and pulling on it like that because you're using your body weight, right? You just set it here and lean. But right now I really want this bending effect as well. So there's like round one on this hide. 
I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a light coat of oil on this. I kind of feel like I might have overdone it on these guys. So I'm really going for just a, a single light coat, not even like all the way down in all the wrinkles, maybe. Let's see how it looks here. Certainly on the very thickest parts, it, it can take more. And you can see the problem with like getting an even distribution using oil applied to the surfaces of the skin. And if you want that oil down in the fiber structure, well, it has to creep down there slowly, unevenly. You're gonna get enough oil in there into the middle without putting too much on the outside. You know, that's really where fat liquors are so great because they just kind of carry that oil in on the liquid that uh, can actually penetrate the hide much easier. And we're gonna do the same thing to the next one that's like this. In the meantime, I'm actually gonna put this in that plastic bag. I don't necessarily want that drying anymore right now until I get everything caught up. I'm trying to get everything to like the same stage. And on this one, I think I'll go ahead and put the oil on it before I work the edges. Okay, so that one we oiled first. Again, look at how spotty it is. You know, it's just really hard to, to put this on evenly. That's just how it is. But this isn't so much to get stuff into the hide. I think they're they're pretty good that way with the emulsion. It's just to kind of like get the, make sure the grain is well nourished and well oiled. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of getting in a, a groove here and getting into a rhythm. And I want to show you what that looks like. I'm doing single hard pulls. I'm holding this hand well down. And that's because the more this hand is down, the more friction there is coming over here. And you'll feel it, right? Like if I go like this, that's easy. In fact, if I don't hold it down enough, it just it just falls. The more I put that down, the, the harder it is to pull this over and that's bending the fibers more. So I'm in a rhythm and, you know, working. I'm not kind of going like this. I'm going like this. I put it on here, I put my hand down and then I throw my body weight into it and try to follow through the stroke like that. Systematically, one strip at a time across the hide. And again, we can go both side to side, like this is the neck, across the neck, with the neck this way, and diagonally to get more uh, stretch and different stretches to keep those fibers. Think of it as like felt. It's all interwoven fibers like this. And you're trying to like get them pulled this way, then you're pulling them this way, then pulling them this way, and it's gonna fluff them up and keep them broken apart. We'll roll this one up. Let's put this under that plastic bag. All right, so I went over this once. There's a couple areas that I just, you know, they're, they're so thin and they feel a little papery and already really dry, and I don't like that. And where are they? Are they worth messing with? Yeah, I think so. And I'm just gonna get this mist going real light. It's not gonna get these areas so wet, these thin areas that they're not gonna dry just as fast as the thicker areas of this hide that are much wetter already. It's just gonna bring them back a little bit towards that state. Now, some of these areas are just naturally papery and crappy, and um, that's gonna get, you know, probably cut off. So I'm just gonna spritz these a little bit, and that way when I roll them up, th that water will soak in and make these a little bit more workable again, and I can catch up on them, maybe get them just a little bit better. Now, if you didn't have a water bottle, so you're in a primitive situation or something like that, a uh, damp rag, you know, or even just a wet hand, just get your hand lightly wet and just wipe it on there evenly, same thing. Nice, coming along here. Yeah, this grain ripped here. I, I wonder if I got the grain underneath onto the blade or something, that's probably what happened. Okay, now all the hides have been oiled once on the grain side. They've been gone over on the stake to get the edges well started and partially softened. Let's look now at how to raise this grain. There's different ways to do that. Essentially, it involves putting the grain side to the grain side and bending the the hide fiber. So this is a good one right here. Uh, again, if you're doing a single hide, you don't need tools, and this is a great way to sit and work the hide. Just like that. Stuff like this, right? I'm bending the grain to the grain sharply. It just makes more wrinkles. And you wanna do that in a lot of different directions because you don't want lines, which would result from bending it in only one direction. There's a lot of lines going this way and not as many going this way, so just target that. 
okay? And now this is much more of like an even wrinkle. And we can keep doing that in alternate directions and diagonals. Let's see if we can do that as a roll too, especially using the graining board. This one's a cork face. I haven't really used this. Again, we have this problem with the sheet. We really want this to be a uh, wooden table or something. Yeah, that could work. So this area is tending to be a lot more flat. Let's see if we can work that. So I'm gonna throw this over, grab the graining board. And this is really, you hear that? That's putting a real sharp bend on that area. Okay. And it's got, now it's got all these lines going like that. And if the stupid sheet wasn't moving so much, I need a tannery. Nice, now look at this. We have these beautiful, pretty even marks going that way. This is really awkward. Nice, looking really good. So that's how that tool works. And with this table being so lame, it's too low for me. This It should be like up here if I'm gonna use that tool. Uh, or this tool, which normally would have a, I haven't finished this yet, but it'll have a handle and a couple of wrist straps. So you can kind of use almost like your whole forearm. And that's because in uh, softening hides, the finishers would actually use their forearm like this to work the hides because you don't have, to, you know, it's much longer than your palm and easier. So this is essentially like an extension or, you know, better, wider, grippier forearm. But since I really want to accentuate this grain, I'm actually going to go and do this systematically, grain to grain rolls like this, to really crack up that grain and accentuate the texture. So I'm going to start doing that kind of stuff to the hide. Let's go and cable this a little bit and see how that works on this leather. So this is a cable, it's just a steel cable. This one looks like it's uh, either quarter inch or maybe it's like three sixteenths. And this is how it works. Uh, it works the hide very fast. It really fluffs it up a lot. Um, it warms it so it'll dry faster. If you want something really soft, this is a, a good way to do it, is working a lot like this. So I'm gonna work from the neck down to the tail, going side to side like this. Also, when I'm doing this, I don't want it to, it'll flip around. It'd be really easy to get the grain on this cable and then pull it across. Do not do that you will damage the grain. So now we're to the edge. Let's go ahead and do this to all the edges. This is a high energy output activity, but it does a lot of work very quick and it really works a hide fiber. There's other versions of this, like a, a thin steel edge that you pull the hide across. Um, some people use an old psi blade. Now you'll notice that this really only works the hide fiber in one direction when I'm doing the edges here. So I do want to go back and compensate by either using the stake or stretching the edges back out with my fingers or something once we're done. But I just want to get around this edge well one time before we go grab another hide. And since it works so fast, um, it's easier for me to do a bunch of hides at once because aside from, you know, getting tired or being too much work, it, you know, it, it does work the hides very fast and I can get through them before they dry. What I didn't do is I didn't work the hide neck to tail. So I wanna, I wanna cable it that way too before we quit. And there's one other thing I wanna tell you here in a second. You see how much that really works and fluffs up those hide fibers? So one thing you can do is, when you're working this, put the hide so that I'm, I'm, what's showing down here against the cable is the flush side, right? So I'm not like risking damaging the grain until I get past the halfway point of the spine and then the grain will start to show down here and I might wanna like that. See, now that has more potential to damage the grain. So I might want to, um, take this and flip it to finish it. Okay, and one more great way to use the cable is 
using your body weight to put stretches on the hide, uh, you know, alternate stretching again. So let's say I'm gonna go from neck to tail. I just grab the hide and I'm kind of curling my, my hand to get a good handful and just leaning back and using my body weight to put that stretch on those fibers. And again, that's great, but the real benefit comes when you go back the other way or some other way and get contrary opposing stretches, right? Like this. And that's gonna start to give this hide some loft where the, the fibers fluff up. So I can also do that diagonally and then I get a whole nother different stretch angle. So three of the hides I've run over the cable and we're ready to kind of move on with them. When I took this one out, I'm just like, again, this hide's different. It has a higher density, it has less wrinkling, it has less wrinkling at the neck, and it just wants to be a little different. So with this one, I'm just gonna stretch it by hand. I may use the stake some, but I'm gonna do like a lot less softening. And when you cable the hides, you'll really get like a fluff. You'll, you'll notice that the loft, like the loft of the fiber comes up. And I don't want that with this. I'm gonna make this a little more substantial, a little flatter, less stretchy, less pliable piece of leather because that has its own uses, right? I mean, you can do different things with it and it just kind of wants to be that way. And it'll give us a little bit of a, a comparison. You know, I'm not gonna do a lot of work to this one. I do wanna go over the edges again, and that's kind of what we're gonna do with all four hides right now, is just go check the edges. Not check them, but work them. Well, check them at the same time as working them. Find out where they're at and make sure that they're getting worked enough because they're the thing that's gonna dry fastest. Because they dry fast, they tend to uh, crisp up easy. So again, lean on the hide, pull out the edges, and then pull them this way, or vice versa. And you can do that once, or you can do it twice, but just do it a little and then move on. So this hide, I've been working for a little bit here. I did the edges uh, once or twice, and I've been stretching it like this, and it's starting to bounce back a little. You can really feel the loft has come up. Um, it's kind of fluffed out, it's draping, and when I stretch it, it rebounds a little bit more than it was before and that's what it'll do as it starts to dry as it gets drier and drier when you stretch it instead of staying stretched it'll rebound and, and bounce back so i'm starting to feel this uh, do that this is at a great place for me to put it away until i can cable it again so i just went over this on the uh, cable and the first thing i'm going to do is get the edges because they're getting really dry and remember, the cable only works the edges in one direction. It stretches them this way. So I really want to come back and pull my fingers off of the edge of the hide several times. And I can really feel that now, uh, getting some loft. Like this area is pretty much done right there. I mean, each time I do it, I can feel it come around a little more. That's about as far as I'm gonna get with that part. So I did that three times, keep going around the edge. I kind of wanted to do more of this, but some parts of the hide, it's not working because they're too thin and they're too dry. And when they're really dry, there you go right there. See, my hand just slips. So unless I were to have like a glove or something that, that had grip on it, you know, maybe those gloves with the little rubber dots, uh, that would work. I can only do that on the damp parts. One thing I can do though is this right here. And this will also really crinkle the grain up pretty hardcore. And it really works the skin fibers a lot. So that's a good technique. And also if something gets away from you, like this edge right here feels a little hard, you can really kind of just rub it up like that and work it really hard that way. But edges first because they're drying really quickly and a lot of them are almost finished. About half the edge on this. This is about the last thing I'll need to do or be able to do before they're completely dry. Other parts are still a little bit damp and you'll start to be able to tell that because you'll feel this like fluff and you'll feel that the skin is drier and warmer. Like it'll have a warm instead of a cool feeling. Like all this still feels cool because it's damp, but um, like here it feels a little bit warmer. 
Uh, these are coming along quite well. Some of the edges are actually finished, uh, but I'm just toast for the day and I want to do a good job. So I'm going to put these away till tomorrow. Uh, there's enough moisture that it's okay for me to put them away. Actually, it's kind of a good thing because it'll just again redistribute that moisture evenly. Look at this though. That's looking um, quite beautiful. Okay, today we are actually getting an early start. These are the three hides that we're cabling. This is the hide I'm just going to work by hand more. I might use the stake a little bit, but I think I'm going to more just kind of do some subtle manipulation like this. Since the hides were wrapped up overnight and they're still a little damp, parts that were drier may have become slightly damper, which is good because it gives me a chance to work them a little bit more. And first things first on all of them is to go over the edges. Just work them a little more while I have the chance since they dry the quickest. And some of these feel pretty dry, but again, even that little bit of moisture that got back into them from rolled, being rolled up in that bag with, you know, the other parts of the hide out here being damp does help. It gives us a little window of time here. So with these hides that I'm going to cable, I'd prefer to just cable them right out of the gate this morning and then come back and work on the edges a little bit. I'm just going to go over all the hides around the edge first, across the middle, same thing as I've been doing. So after cabling them, um, I need to go around all the edges and just pull them out like that. And this time it's going to be super quick. A lot of them are already dry. The centers of the hides are still pretty damp in areas, and so I will continue to cable those to try to get more fluff and loft and suppleness out of them. Beautiful grain pattern on the neck. It extends down the back pretty far here, very much on these sides. A little less here, so let's see what we can do about that. I need infrastructure. <clears throat> that worked, so now there's a lot more lines um, all the way to here. You can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's it's very much lines across all of that now. Yeah, that made a big difference. Really nice. I love it. I'm actually going to just put these away and solve this whole table issue. This table's too low for me, uh, and there's no texture and the sheet's moving around, so a different table. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something, and... Uh, then we'll get back to this because I want to go over all these hides. Look for areas like this where the, the grain texture is larger and try to make it finer like this. And then anything that's looking kind of smooth, work that up. And that should be done preferably while the hide is still damp. Uh, just like if you were tooling leather, right? So if you tool leather, you take the leather, you damp it with like a wet rag or something, let it sit for a minute, and then you work it and you compress it and you can make impressions and pictures in it. Um, same thing. That's that. This is going to hold better if the hides are still damp. So let's get back on these. And the thing is, they're almost done. Like when I put them away, they're really almost done. But I wanted to do two things as they finish drying. One is I want to raise this grain more. So right here is a good example where, you know, if you look over here, you've got this fine, you know, more fine wrinkled pattern. I want all of it as much as possible to look like that. And it won't. It'll look different. It's going to be finer in some areas, coarser in others. But I'm pretty sure that with, you know, good application of this tool, especially, we can get uh, these areas more how we want them. And I will demonstrate that right now with our new table, which is also taller, which is awesome. Several times this way, flip this around, go right back across it the opposite way. So it's definitely better. This is the area I want to target right there. That's what I'm talking about. Now it's more homogenous. It's more prettier. I like it. Okay, so I want to do that, and I also want to cable them more because cabling gives you the most loft and fluff, it seems like. Or at least it gives it to you quicker, you know? And I don't have a lot of time left on these uh, before they're dry, and especially since it's a 
quite warm, like summer's actually here, windy, breezy day. Roll these up with all the thin edges inward, stack them here. So this is the hide we're just working by hand with no cabling. And you know, you definitely feel that it's, it's a lot flatter and it doesn't have that same loft that the cabled hides have. It's also much less wrinkly, you can see. And I'm gonna leave that that way, just so we can see the difference. And if I don't like it, I can go back and rework this hide. All I have to do is damp it back again. Then I wanna go around all these edges, pull them out, pull them that way, crosswise, left to right, you know, left, left leg to right leg, across the neck, and hump, and then stretch it lengthwise. Give it a good snap there. And I'm gonna shake it out to a more natural shape, and I'm just gonna leave it, because it's doing fine. I'm gonna just hang it right here. All right, let's cable these suckas. So what I'm trying to do is just get a little bit of loft to the fibers more, so this has a little bit more fluff and that's gonna make it more supple, more buttery. Now to an extent, the more that you do this, the more fluff you're gonna get and the soft you're gonna get it, but only to an extent. You know, there's a point of diminishing returns and you can't make the hide into just anything you want just because you want it. Uh, the stuff you do before, the species, the particular animal, uh, the sex, diet, you know, yeah, lots of things matter. Oh yeah, this is nice. Instead of going just neck to tail, side to side, we'll go diagonally across the hide in one direction, and then the opposite direction. Remember, we want lots of opposing stretches to work that hide fiber open. And a really important thing to remember is that you're only gonna get so far with working the hide while there's still the same amount of moisture in it. When a little bit of the moisture leaves and redistributes, then you have a window, right? The hide has changed, it started to dry out, um, that's when you wanna hit it. And that, that's your little window to have an effect. Now, if it's drying super fast, it is possible that you would wanna work, you know, one or two hides almost constantly. In fact, you notice how much I keep putting these things away because they're drying too fast and I'm worried I won't have that time to catch that little window when the hide has dried a little bit, but not too much. Shake this out to kind of let it adjust itself to kind of a natural shape. When you do this, put one foot back because Sometimes these cables break or this ferrule right here might fail. Even if you have one foot back, if that cable breaks, there's a good chance you're gonna end up on your ass, but you might be a lot less hurt. This area needs more grain raising. That's what we're doing now. We're gonna go observe the whole hide, systematically find those areas and crinkle them up. So all that cabling didn't do this because it does wrinkle the hide and bend it a lot, um, but it's just not quite the same as a super sharp bend. It's very specific. I can target specific areas with it. And again, on this hide, just not liking the big crinkles on this part of the hide. Real inconsistent. I think we can do better. Let's try the cork. Oh, that's nice. I like it. And the extra length is nice too, but again, normally this would have a handle here, which I have, but since I already put the cork on, uh, I might be kind of screwed. I need to put that handle in, smooth it back off, and then put the cork on. Fortunately, I put this cork on with hide glue, I think, so I could take it off by just making the whole thing damp. As you can see, I put it all up here on the, the end, and it's pretty nice. Anyway, handle and arm straps, and that way you can just, you know, really get the full length of it. Now look at that. That is so beautiful now. You can really see the difference here, I hope. Can you? 
Is that is that working out for you guys? Look at that. Luscious. It smells amazing. Oh my god, this is gorgeous. But what I'm gonna do is just go over each of these hides, go around all the different parts where there's a spot like this that uh, isn't as crinkly as I want it, or the crinkles are large, like here, and just see what I can do. You know, again, it's not gonna do what I want it to do everywhere. It's gonna have differences, and that's totally fine. It gives it character and all that. But uh, I'm really making a lot of headway in raising the grain on these parts that uh, are a little bit on the smooth side. So I'm just gonna keep at it and do what I can do. Okay, so back to the cable. I wanna cable these one more time. I just think that there's a couple spots, like with the neck here and stuff. Try to get a, a tiny more bit of loft before I let them dry all the way. And this is pretty light work. I'm not really laying into it even. I'm just trying to get a little loft out of these damp areas before we quit. And I'll do it again after they're completely dry, just to bust it up. Anything that kind of seizes up while it's drying again kind of like you could think of it as like a dried pair of blue jeans especially new ones where it's gonna stiffen up as it dries but you can kind of buff it out a little bit okay i want you to listen uh, while i pull this listen to the creak you hear that you hear that that is the fibers pulling against each other I'm gonna get you right up in here. Hear that? Uh, one thing cabling does that's real important when you're tanning buckskin is it keeps breaking up this flesh side layer, which as it dries, when it's, you know, goes from wet to dry, it tends to glue down real flat and getting it ripped up like this really allows you to fluff the hide underneath up better and easier. So, you know, that seems to be an effect on these as well. Although I don't think it's nearly as important. If I hadn't gone through so much uh, fleshing and refleshing and scudding, I'd just be getting tons of fluff off of here. Like, you know, it's pretty damn clean. So what this is, is just making sure that all that surface is broken up. And just, because this hide's pretty much dry, I think there's just a little residual moisture in the neck. These are going to get draped in various places here, just to let the last moisture fly away into the atmosphere. We're going to take a look at this one, which is put up here with still some moisture in it. It definitely feels a little flat. Okay, so this hide I just hung up over the fence and it's, you know, it's certainly stiffer, more papery, but it had enough moisture in it apparently that it really kind of just dried all weird and crinkled like it was. It'd have been much better if I'd stretched it out really flat and laid it somewhere to dry. I also just don't like the texture on this. Wrinkly, but not consistently wrinkly. I just really like the texture on these other hides like this, you know. I like that a lot. I think what I want to do with this one, what should I do? Let me think about this. All right, I decided what to do with this. I'm going to actually, am I? Am I gonna do that? Wait, no. E ah, oh, oh. Crap. I got the solution, you guys. I don't know what to do with this hide yet because I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm probably gonna end up using this for something that's a little bit more flat and I might actually try to flatten it out completely and then just kind of refinish it according to what I actually want to do with it. So, and that way I don't have to deal with it right now. So I'll come back later today sometime and just uh, we'll check these over and see how they turned out and beat them up on the cables. So one last time to fluff them up from any uh, residual moisture that's still leaving.